Gebroit pottery is named after Gebroit rock, which comes from a specific place on the Lizard Peninsula, on the sort of eastern side of the Lizard Peninsula, near St Kevin and on to Goonhilly Downs. And they found that looking at pottery throughout Cornwall, that it was used from the Neolithic all the way up into the sort of post-Roman period. So that's thousands of years, about 4,000 years, that people were using this one bit of clay, which comes from an area that's really only a sort of seven kilometers square, and it's quite hard to get to. When you look at it under a microscope in a piece of pottery, the gabbroic clay from the lizard has a very distinctive look. It's very easily identifiable when you look at pottery because it has a lot of white flecks in it and it sort of looks a bit like a hobnob biscuit. Generally, it's thought that the clay was removed rather than pots being made on the lizard. They took the clay back home. A lot of the settlements in prehistory in Cornwall tend to have been circular settlements, little farmsteads which may have had a family or a few families living there and just farming the land, you know, living very simple everyday lives. And so because they were making lots and lots of these very crude pots, but also very nice pots that they were using for cooking and everyday sort of domestic purposes, and if you go down there today, one of the houses, roundhouses, has been cut through and eroded by the cliff. And you can see a big orange sort of mound in the cliff. And it's all made of this pottery. It falls down onto the beach. And quite often when people walk along there, they say, oh, wow, look at this pottery. They collect a lot of it. And the first place, of course, they go to take it is Helsinki Museum. I think the more common sense argument would be that it's got a cultural and sort of an element of identity about it. It would almost be like a sort of pilgrimage to go there. Travelling across the landscape, going onto the lizard has quite an impact when you walk across it today. I think you go back with a certain experience and that experience may have referred you to a certain identity. So it's sort of like a, a totemic source. That's how I would relate it. It's something that represents who you are. When people ask me as an archaeologist what's the most amazing thing I've ever found, I always think it's finding a fingerprint that fits my finger on a piece of pottery and that directly links me to the past and to someone in the past who made that pot. There are no conclusive answers in archaeology. You're always discovering things, and certainly for prehistory, you never, never know the answer. And that's the sort of exciting thing.